So let's see, you guys all came here to watch some videos. So let's do that. Today we are going to be talking about violations and it's just kind of a conglomerate of violations. Um, and if you all have something, I can't guarantee I'm gonna have every violation that you may think of because um, they're not obviously that prominent, but I have a lot of stuff that, you know, maybe can't fill up a whole meeting. And I wanted to talk about, we're gonna start off with out of bounds plays. Out of bounds are violations, right? All right. Now I know it stops quickly because that's the way the video clip was, but here it is fast again. The ball goes out in the corner. Okay, out of bounds violation, right? Ball goes out in the corner. Whose line is that? Whose call is that? It's in the end line, it's the lead. Well, it went out this way. It's pretty close. Well, I can't tell if it went out to me. I couldn't see it because it was blocked by you. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I mean, for, for this one, wouldn't it, isn't this okay to have a double, a double uh, one because it isn't obvious which line it goes over? Absolutely, because it is in the corner. and. I've watched this over and over and over. I don't know if it went to the end line and based on the angle or the sideline. So two whistles is okay on this. And it's a big pet peeve of mine. I hate double whistles on out of bounds, but this is the one time that it's okay because there's no, like you, Dave said, there's no clear line as to who went on them. But how do we handle it? Because you don't want two different signals, which a double whistle is inviting a two different signals, correct? So the ball goes out in the corner, right? And we got a double whistle. All right, we've already established that. So if it goes out in the corner, that's the trails line. That's the leads line. We all know that. And boy, I mean, that's about as close to the both as possible. Do we agree? I mean, so a double whistle here is okay. But what are we gonna do? And I don't have this diagram down here. What are we gonna do? Who's going to signal? And you pass it to the lead since he's the closest. Yeah, I, I'll go with the one that's the closest. That's All what right. I was just getting ready to say. Since I, I was the trail and the lead's closer to that play, I let the lead take it. I was going to ask, what's, yeah, what's the, what would be wrong if the, the lead was it? I think that is all good, um, all good suggestions. Um, and someone, someone uh, just gonna... chatted, chatted their answer. And I think this is the best way to do it. First of all, hopefully you both know that there's a double whistle, yep. right? If only one of you know that there's a double whistle, then just hold, keep your arm up and hold. You don't need to point right away. You know, there's a double whistle. Wait, did my partner hear it? Is he pointing? And then if, if you confirm that he's not pointing, then you look at each other and maybe you say you take it or, or just put your hand down and let your partner take it. But make sure that you make eye contact or some kind of context. So each of you know, wait, I know you have a whistle. I have a whistle. What do we want to do? If you want to get together and talk about it, that's fine. Um, I don't think that's necessary, but whenever you hear a double, on a foul too, foul or violation, whenever you have a double whistle, hold, post and hold. Your hand goes up to stop the clock and you and you hold it because if the, you don't know if the other person heard your whistle, right? Now, I, I also think what you all said was if the lead is the closest he can take it, that's fine. But what if the lead says to the trail, you take it? Maybe he was only kind of half watching. He knows it went out of bounds, but he's not sure who it went out on. So just take cues from each other. Does that make sense? Here's another one. All right, it happened here. Did you see what happened? Was it a foul or was it a violation? Like a foul to me. 
his knee. All right, look at look at his verticality. All right, now I realize his leg may be sticking out a bit. I realize that. But he doesn't stick his leg out at him. All right, he doesn't stick it. I'm not saying he could say, well, he's not legal because his leg is sticking outside of his frame. Well, that's true, but his leg didn't stick out at him. And what does the dribbler do? He decides to go into between a... Uh, an opponent and the sideline and the rule is clear if there is less than three feet between an, an, an opponent and a sideline the greater responsibility of the contact is on the dribbler so this was properly called a violation he tried to go around <laughs> where there wasn't enough space to go around and then fell out of bounds well sorry that's a violation out of bounds does anyone disagree with that no, i think that was a good call now, again, I'm not taking away the fact that his leg was stuck out, but there was no place for this dribbler to go. He shouldn't have gone in that direction in the first place. There was no place to go. All right. You guys are kind of quiet tonight. Hey, Josh, on, yeah. that on that last one, was there any beef from uh, either on coach? On this play? Yes. Um, I honestly don't remember. Okay. Um, I think this game had a lot of beefs throughout it. So <laughs> may there might've been a, a small, you know, arms up in the air. Are you kidding me? Or something like that. But um, no, it wasn't something that was a major turned into anything. No. Okay. Thank you. And that's one, I, I'll make a comment on that. That's one where if a coach argues that you can explain to him, coach, there wasn't any place for him to go or coach. There wasn't enough room. It was less than three, however you want to say it, but don't get into a drawn out argument because he's not going to understand that rule. In fact, he's probably going to think that you're wrong because he's never even heard of that rule. So you can give your explanation. And when he doesn't agree with it, you just move on and, and, and get the game going. Not that that's anything uh, earth shattering for you all to know, but sometimes we as officials for some reason get stuck on defending our call to a coach instead of just letting it move on because we know that the coach isn't going to understand. Hey, Josh, do you have that rule number by chance? Do you know it? Oh, contact? my goodness. Uh, yeah, it's in contact. It might be in guarding too, but um, I'll look at it real quick. Article 7, it's Rule 10, Section 7, Article 7. And then I think it's in guarding too, under Rule 4. All right. And that's part of what the, um, that's part of what the, um, no, I don't think it's in guarding. I think it's just in, in rule 10. <clears throat> and that's part of what um, the Federation is talking about. Know what a legal guarding stance is. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, now we have two whistles on this play as well, I think. We have the out of bounds here on the end line, which is the lead's line, right? But where is the lead? Short. There's no possible way the lead is going to know who that ball went out on. I mean, they might, I guess they might have seen who it went off on, but you got to get in position. We got to hustle, at least get closer to the line down here when it happens. Now, again, we all get beat and I get that. Sometimes we all get beat. But then we also have a point from the center, right? Now, the center has just as good a look at this <laughs> as the lead does. Probably better than the side. Maybe better. But the point is, it's not the center's call, right? Regardless of whether the lead's in position or not, that is the lead's call. And this is where, uh, on the first one, where I say it's a pet peeve of mine. If it's not your line, know that it's not your line and don't blow your whistle because the chances are if you do blow your whistle, you're gonna have a, a double point, right? So here are the, the center points. He's pointing down, he's pointing that way. That's a problem. And if a coach wants to you know, make a stink about it, he's gonna say, well, wait, wait, he said it was this way. And then you gotta to get together and then you gotta either convince the coach that you shouldn't have blown your whistle or have to go to an arrow. 
depending on what kind of game it was. So yeah, just just keep in your mind all the time, which line is my line? That's not my line. I'm not blowing my whistle. And if your partner doesn't see it, he will ask you for help and then you can help him. Right? See, if he get if he I gets it, this, go ahead. I thought that's what he was doing because he didn't stop the clock. He didn't raise his hand. Right? Who, the lead? The lead did not. The, the center didn't. It did the state. Oh, maybe he did. The lead did very, very little, and I don't think the center did. Maybe the center didn't even have a whistle. The lead but the center definitely signaled. <laughs> the center definitely signaled. Yeah. And to be honest, I think the center was right. Oh, yeah. But I spoke to the officials on this game, and the lead said – they were losing by 30 or whatever it was. I just, there was like, you know, two minutes to go or a minute to go. I just gave them the ball back. Mm -hmm. Okay. I get that. That's fine. Uh, whether you agree with it or don't agree with it, but that's why then you only have one official signal, because if they're going to do something like that, that is not by the rules that maybe you're going to kill them with kindness. Then you, again, you avoid the, the situation of, of having two different signals. All right, let's move on to a different violations, shall we? What's next? What do you guys want to tell? I've got backcourt delay of game. Let's do some delay of game. I just asked you and I'm gonna make the decision. <laughs> People don't like calling delay of game calls and I don't know why. Maybe because it's one step closer to a technical file and people don't want to call a technical foul. And I, I guess I get that, but the rule is the rule. And these kids know for the most part, the delay games happen when? One out of a timeout. They after the, the after a basket is made. After a basket, they hit the ball. Right? Oh. Now you're, you're right, a delay game as to coming out into the floor, Tom. But I'm talking about interfering yeah. with the ball after a made goal. That's usually when we go tweet, 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 it'll delay a game, right? In the book. Put it in the book. Right. Wait. Unfortunately, these this, this is a state game. Uh, unfortunately, too many times, and even in state games, it happens and, and we don't call it. What is that? What did he do? the ball to the official he grabbed the ball and You're threw like, it to the official yeah. now this one is walking the line and i'm not going to say 100 percent. you call a delay again this right it is the second quarter the beginning of that second quarter it's 10 to 16 which means the game isn't you know probably terribly heated it's probably not terribly decided um did he have to grab that ball after it went through the basket? No. He could have dropped it right there. He could have let it go through. He did not have to grab it, turn around, grab it, turn around, and then say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, there's no fast break happening. I get that. So this really probably could have been passed on as a delay game. But by rule, that's a delay of game. He is interfering with the ball after it went through. I would say at least talk to the kid. Hey, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say this is a this is a don't do it again talk. Yeah. Hey, number five, don't just let the ball go. Don't grab it. Oh, I was passing it to you, ref. I know, I get that, but don't just don't do it. All right. And again, at this level, especially when we near the state finals, these kids know. They know. They're smart enough to figure it out. All right. Now, same game. In overtime, all right? We're now at the overtime of the game. Five seconds to go in the overtime. What happens? Now, he calls a delay a game on this one. What do you think? Delay a game? Yes, yes. 100% yes. So now, 100% now delay a game, but here, look, look again. What is the time when this happens? Up to two points something. 
What did he just do? He gave them exactly what they were trying to do. If it's under five seconds, then don't blow your whistle because they have five seconds to inbound the ball. Right. Game is over and you don't have to do anything. Because Not- now they're actually using the uh, penalty to gain an advantage. Absolutely. Right. Now, again, it is 100% a delay game, totally, not even a question. But because of the timing of the game, we are supposed to pass on that because I don't know what their intent was, but if they tried to do that in order to get the whistle blown for a delay game, they succeeded. Yeah, that looked like it was totally intentional. They were probably coached to do that. Totally. Last time out or something. Totally. I agree. So be and sometimes it's easier said than done. Obviously, watching a clip, it's easier to know what the time is, but that's why somebody needs to know how much time is left. Well, actually, you all do, but you need to know how much time is left on the clock for these particular situations. Good. Correct. Yes. Now, again, this is similar to the first one. Did he have to touch that ball after it went through? No. Now, again, what do you have? Delay a game or nothing? Delay a game. So White was – Rep off the end line. That's a problem. White was going to grab the ball, but then Blue knocked it out of his hands. So maybe we do pass on this because he didn't – Technically, interfere with the ball. I mean, it looks yeah, like, it's like two to two. That yeah, might just that's a, a warning. So early in the game, just give a warning. It says two to two on the scoreboard. I would just probably tell the kid to leave it. Let it go. Yeah, look at that. There's four minutes to go in the first quarter, and again, the blue player he comes in. Now he shouldn't have went to grab it. There's no reason for him to do that. None whatsoever. And I hate it when players do that. They got to get their own ball that comes through. But then the blue player knocks it out of his hand anyway. Hey, number one, let the ball go. If it goes through the basket, don't touch it. That's what I'm doing. All right, but but so by ones, rule, by rule, that's a delay game. So for the ones that said they would give a delay of the game, who would they give the delay to? Who's the delay of game given to? I would give it on white because even though blue is trying to get it, white still still interferes with blue's ability to get the ball. If, if I even would give a delay game on it. Yeah, because Blue is the one that knocked the ball out. But it's Blue's ball. Oh, can Blue, ball, can ball. Blue interfere with the ball they're going to get? Right. No. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. Why would that – yeah. Why would that be a delay oh. of game? I give white a warning is what I would do. I'll give white a warning. That's it. So early in the game, I would just say let it go through. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree this is a warning, but if you are going to give a delay of game, it sh- still should be on – White one oh, because yeah. he he's in a vicinity of the ball that he doesn't need to be and is trying to enter and is interfering with Blue's ability to get the ball. Correct. Now I do want to mention the rules book does not say interference by the team that just scored, right? It just says interference. So technically it could be on either team, but why and this is common sense now, why would the team who's going to get the ball be interfering with the ball to, you know, prevent them from getting it, right? So it should, if you're going to have a delay a game, which I believe is what you were saying, it's going to be on the team that just scored. Do we agree? Yeah. Yeah, Blue, it's not going to delay a game on, on Blue. Because Blue why wouldn't. Would, why would they be delaying their own? Right. They wouldn't yeah. want to delay their own bat ball. But this one we all agree. This one we all agree is a is a pass, right? A talk to? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. All right. Hey, Josh. Yes, listening. The kid, the team that the defense after the score gets upset and he slams the ball down to recover it himself, but he loses control of it. Now do we call delay of game on him? You mean what if that happens? What if this player grabs it and he's mad and, and tries to bounce it really hard to himself? Yes, and he and then loses the bo- control of that. And then the ball goes where? It, it just it gets away from him. Doesn't have to be very far. But does it go on the court? Does it go off the court? Does it? Which way does it go? 
it goes towards the cameraman there. Let's just say it goes towards, so it goes towards the okay. right. So it stays out of bounds, but he, you know, he's I'm, off the play. I'm going to do nothing except keep counting. As soon as he picked up that ball, it is at his disposal. I'm going to start my count. And if he wants to lose the ball because he's frustrated, I'm going to keep counting. And if I get to five, when he goes to grip that ball, I got to five and sorry, you lost the ball. Got it. Thank you. Anyone else have a different approach? Yeah, I, that's exactly what I was going to say. Perfect. Yeah, remember what the disposal is. And again, the kid wants to do that. You know, if it goes onto the court, you could say that it was a pass onto the court even. And it plays in, uh, I guess it, it, every situation is a little different. You would have to see it, but. All right. Oh, yeah. Now this one, he grabs it, turns around, and then kind of just flicks it a little bit behind him. I mean, if that's not a yeah. delay a game, I don't know what is. Now, did you see him? Did you see him also turn like, uh, are you getting me on that? I truly believe. I truly believe the kid was not trying to interfere with the ball. I really don't think that was his intent, but because they, they, people let players get their own rebound. It's just a natural reaction. And then he did interfere with it. And if it's not called, it's going to continue on. And so that's why we've got to get that. See, he's like, oh, wait, what was that me? Because he knew he kind of did something. <laughs> all right. We all saw that, right? Yep. Yep. Let's do one more and then we'll go to the next violation. Delay a game or are you passing on that? Delay. But if that didn't hit white, it would have gone a long way. Now, again, I don't think this kid was intentionally trying to interfere with the ball, but why does he need to hit the ball after it goes through? If the ball gets hit and it kind of goes to the kid and he's got to pick it up right around here, I might pass on it. But it made him hit this player, which bounced all the way over here. There's absolutely no possible way for them to get any kind of a a fast break the other way or a run and this team runs and guns. This is Evanston. For those of you that know Evanston, they run the ball. That totally took away their possibility of dish, dish down and, you know, quick bucket. So just a little hit like that is a delay a game and it needs to be called. This official did a great job. I'm not sure who was on that game, but. All right. Comments or questions on delay a game or at least that specific delay of game. I know I didn't really have anything else, but. All right, you guys are good. All right, next. Kicking the ball, kicking. Believe it or not, I actually have some videos on kicking, not many. It happened here. I'm going to play it fast again before I play slow. You tell me what you think. Nah, it's put on the ground. Did you see it? That wasn't a kick. No kick there. Did he intentionally kick the ball? No. no. His no. leg did move in that direction. But now it's on the ground again. It bounced off the floor and just hit him in the leg. That's nothing. Right? And why is a kick why is a kick a violation? When is a kick a violation? When is intentional? It has to be intentionally kicked. Now, that doesn't mean the kid oh, I didn't mean to intentionally kick it, but if the kid moves his foot in that direction in an attempt to stop the ball, he is all intents and purposes, he's kicking the ball, right? So if the leg is moving toward the ball. In order to stop the ball, it's a kick. Now, if the leg's moving toward the ball, uh, say, an offensive player, 
that's not necessarily an intentional kick. They could intentionally kick. An, an offensive player, can they intentionally kick the ball? Yes, sir. Absolutely they can. It might be different situations, and I have a couple here that I'm going to play, but but they can do it. And I had a coach tell me once, "What we, we're we on offense. What do you mean it was kicking? We're on offense. Yeah, you're on offense. The kid kicked the ball. All right, so that one wasn't a kick. How about this one? All right, the official calls a kick. We'll play it fast again, and then we'll play it slow. What do you think? I don't think so, seeing it fast. He's just falling down. It's, it's not intent. <laughs> Did he intentionally try to keep the ball from getting away from him with his leg? Falling down and it yep. looked, like like he he looked like he tried to use his foot to kick it. Looked like it to me. He stuck his yeah. leg out toward the ball to try and stop it from getting away. Now, those that say he didn't, I'm not going to argue with you. This is a tough one. He Maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. Maybe he was just falling. But the official on this game who's been watching all game thought he intentionally tried to stop that ball from getting away. Someone said they probably might have a foul on this play. Do you have a foul before the kick? Or nothing? Nah. Nothing. I don't think there's a foul either. Someone said, well, his body ran into him, knocked him over. Well, I suppose possible, but I think it's just two guys going after a loose ball. No one has any advantage over the other. And the kid knew what he. White fifty four is throwing his body into him. Looks like he's. That looks intentional to me. You think that foul looked intentional? The white player undercutting twenty four. I don't see it. I think he's trying to get the ball, lost his footing, and fell down into the player. I could see maybe a foul. I don't think he was intentional. See, look at that. Look at his feet. Watch his feet. He rolls into him. The way, yeah, but the way his foot rolls tells me he didn't try to undercut him. Why you could, rolling? you could Why be right, rolling? Mike. You he, could be. Look, he rolls into him and rolls back. I, I'm just what, what I see. Uh, uh, again, you could be right. Hey, I don't, I don't see it. All right, but this is about kicking. This isn't about a foul. <laughs> All right, next one. Good high kick. The official gave a good high kick signal. Did he kick it intentionally? Mm -hmm. Looked like it initially. He's going for a rebound. What do you think? I think that rough on the first line. Hard to do. <laughs> I don't know if he intentionally did it or not. I, I, yeah, he did. You think so? <laughs> yeah, he did. His, le his leg went out pretty far. I think he's losing a rebound and he does kind of. Yeah, he, exactly. He's realizing he's losing the rebound and then he kicks it. Yeah. All right. So we got a kick on that. And then the uh, ref can go for a cheerleading line too. <laughs> Come on. That ref's got some good hamstrings. He got that leg up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. See, kicks aren't all that easy. Most of them are, but there's some that really make you think. Now, before I play it slow, the ball gets kicked over here. Why is the center calling it? Is that okay? Not okay. Because he likes to call the whole court. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. uh, reach it, but the the trail is behind the action, so the trail is just taking off. Line that kick. The trail just missed it. Yeah, he's yep. taking off. Now hold hey, on. Josh, yes, I'm, I'm gonna listening. Use a, I'm gonna use a Rhino Lesiak method right there. Moses parting of the steel. Who has the best look at that? The center. Because the trail is behind and he just missed it. Now I'm going to share the sound so you can hear the whistle. I want you to see the timing 
the timing of the of the kick to the whistle from the center. Did you guys hear that? Yeah. The kick happens. The kick happens here. Okay, kick happens here. And then the whistle finally blows here. But I guess my only concern is that, um, you know, and I think someone illustrated it best uh, on a different class I was in is, you know, it's the difference between a misdemeanor and a felony. If you're gonna reach into my area, it needs to be a felony and you have some referees who prefer you to kind of do it that way. And so once you start reaching, coaches notice that and then they're gonna be like, okay, why didn't you call this call over here? Because you're reaching, right? And so you, you, you're demonstrating a, a pattern that their coach is gonna be looking for you to repeat if other calls are missed. All right, so that's true. Uh, and this, I don't think, unless anyone wants to argue, I don't think this qualifies as a felony by any means. But who? Kick, but, <laughs> Why, get it right. But That's, do you think? Exactly. That, do you think the coach saw that? This official is watching. This official is blah blah blah. This official is watching what? One. No, the back. The two, back of the player. Three. He's not going down the free throw line, really. My so. point is, good he's, call. I'm just saying that you're opening up yourself for more um, feedback from the coach if you're not looking into other people's zones on different calls that are missed. And if the coach says, if this is me, the coach says, were you going to make the call for him all night? That was right in front of your partner. I'll say he was straight line coach. I was looking right at the play That's and you're you right. Say. And you're right. That's going to maybe open the door to him all over me all night. You're, you're possibly right. But for me personally, this official's not really watching anything. There's no matchups. So he's looking into the lane. That's what the center is supposed to do. The center is there to get extra help for where the most of the play is. He waited a second or two for the trail to get it, and the trail didn't get it, so he came in and he got it. That's a good, that's a good call, in my opinion. And you know what, Josh? That's one of those things that should be covered in your pregame. These guys out there, partner, if I, if I can't see it and you know it's there and you're 100% sure it's a call, make the call. That's why there's three officials. Right, but don't guess. And and I've seen that too where if you are calling out of your primary, they say over 90% of the time you're wrong. So, yeah, it, you, you're – to whoever said that, I don't know who was speaking, but it you it's are – Darnell. You are – no, 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 before Darnell. If you are opening yourself to a – oh, you're going to call the whole court – Right? Are you going to help them all night? And then when you pass on the next one, oh, what? Why don't you help them with that one? So that, that's a real risk that you take. And if you're able to handle it, great. If you're not, then you might want to think about it. But I thought this one was an obvious enough kick, and the the center's literally looking has nothing to look at, so he's helping out with the action. He waited for him to call it. He didn't steal the call. He waited for him to call it, and then he came in a second or two after. I, I agree with Darnell. He said if he said if you're a hundred percent right that you got it, that it's a violation, then you go get it. He's hundred percent right. And this is and this is where we get paid the big bucks, right? Because the higher level you get, the more you have to be able to to discern between get it and don't get it. And that's a hard thing to know. And even for guys who've been working varsity basketball for 30 years, we sometimes still get it wrong. So constantly trying to understand when and when not to is important. So I think that's a good comment as far as felony misdemeanor type issue. Hey, can, can you go back to that play? Um, yeah, there's sure. One thing, there's one thing I get taught too is that proximity is not necessarily primary. And in that kind of situation, the lead didn't, or the trail didn't, couldn't see that one. And center had a great look right straight line through it. And so he had the best look at it. And a lot of times when you're, when you're fishing a three man, who has the best look? Well, and I think Darnell, I, I kind of half listened to you, Darnell. <laughs> you said it was a Ron O comment, right? Yep. Sometimes Ron Elisiak Sr. said sometimes, and he was talking about the trail, but sometimes 
It's the parting of the Red Sea, and it just happens to be the guy who's furthest away from the play has the best look, and that's just the way it is sometimes. So you're right. And proximity, it's not so much proximity to the ball. Everyone has their area. But the purpose of the center, the reason of adding the center was to be able to help out on plays like this, maybe a little bit closer into the lane, but you've only got two eyes and you've got 10, 10 players. Well, let's add an extra set of eyes who can help out with that. It doesn't happen nine, all the time. Nine out of players aren't even in his area. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this guy's out of it. This guy's out of it. These guys are a possible matchup. Right, but then he comes out of it. You got three guys, so now you're down to seven players that are coming in, and they're double teaming the player. So, again, it's you, you got to take some um, some liberty sometimes in deciding when you're going to or when not to. All right, one more kicking play. Let's see. Let's do this. One. Okay, we had another kick. I think from the center white definitely had his foot on the ball but was it an intentional kick no way did it get away from him and he kind of tried to wrangle it with his foot no i wouldn't have called that got tangled up. i'm not gonna gripe at my get untangled and or so the feet were just kind of tangled up and then yeah, it kind so of hit the ball, right? Exactly. That's what I see, but you know, you never know. I'm passing on that. Definitely passing on that. All right. Those were fun kicks. All right, let's do jump ball. Unless you guys want to do backcourt, but we can fit that in if you want. After. What happens here? See if you can find out if it is it a violation or no. Got it on the way up. Not even close to getting to the apex of the throw, was it? Stole the tip. He or totally tip. stole it, and we had no whistle on the play. And I think this is one of the most common violations that are passed on in the game of basketball because two reasons. One, Nobody likes to call that call because we're just starting the game. We just want to get the game started. And two, nobody's paying attention to the jump ball because it only happens once, hopefully. And it's so mundane and let's just get the game going. But we have to pay attention. They got, about it this year. they got an unfair advantage on that. What did you say, Tom? We don't have to worry about it this year. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> But when we get back to the jump, maybe they'll get rid of the jump altogether. That'd be awesome. I, we don't need a jump. Although that's the best part of my game. We get rid of the jump and I'm just an average official now. <laughs> it sounds like the- There's uh, no call. moment to shine. It sounds like the call to get rid of the uh, kickoff in football. Yeah, well, the kickoff kids are actually getting hurt. The jump ball, there's not many kids getting hurt. Not they're getting hurt every time, but. All right, how about- Oh, I didn't find. How about this one? Oh, he caught it himself. Eh. All right. So he called the violation. He called the violation. Is it? Once the ball hits the floor, the jump ball ends, correct? Right. Once yeah, the he, tried, he, he tried to grab it and missed it. <laughs> Once the ball hits the floor, the jump ball is over and all the restrictions end. So that is correct. So him catching the ball here is not a violation. Correct? Because the jump ball, it ended. It hit the floor. Now, what about the taps, the he tapping? Tried to, he tried to grab it, though. He just missed it. Okay, but Tom, trying yeah. to grab it is yeah. not a violation. Grabbing yeah. it is, right? Try to. So you actually have to do it. Trying, if, you, if you're trying to foul your opponent to stop the clock, if you don't get them, are you going to call a foul? No, you actually have to do it. So what about the tapping? Is the tapping legal? Yeah, I thought that was good. How many times can you tap the ball? Twice. Twice. 
Once. But he tapped it with two hands here. Is that considered two? Yeah. I mean, one, two, three? No. No? <laughs> the rules do not state you can only tap the ball twice with one hand. Doesn't say that. It says you can only tap the ball twice. So hitting it simultaneously with two hands would be considered one tap, in my opinion. Right? So he tapped it, he tapped it. And yes, you're right. I think he was trying to grab it, but, or maybe he wasn't, but it went as soon as it got to the floor. He was trying to grab it and he missed it. Who was that? Who said that, that as soon as it hits the, the floor, jump ball ends? Me, Jason Hayes. All right, Jason, you get the, you get the virtual Snickers reward. I don't have, I can't send it to you through the computer, but. Well, I'm trying to lose weight, so don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's a good one. This has got lots of stuff in it. Now, for those of you who have seen my YouTube stuff, I've used this on my jump ball segment. So hold your comments to yourself if you've seen it, but let's talk about this whole scenario. Oh, oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> What's the first thing that happens wrong? The clock. So the tip. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good eye on the clock. Look at that, 11.7 seconds left on the clock. We got to wait for them to reset that to eight. And look, <laughs> we've all done it. And if you haven't, you probably will. I've done it, not in a varsity game, but you know, you, you just assume the clock or timer is going to have it ready to go, but we still have to check. So yes, that's the first thing we did wrong. What's another thing he did wrong? The administration of the jump ball, I think he could have. Uh done a little better job there he did it he did a terrible job and i'm i don't want to like pick on this guy specifically but if you're going to bring the ball way way down like this you're supposed to toss the ball in a fashion that the two jumpers cannot time it out you don't want one to have an advantage over the other because they're watching the how you're throwing the ball and i know exactly how some kids are good at that so when you bring it this far down you're giving them a lot of time to see how hard you're throwing it, how high you're probably going to throw it. Look how far away he is. He's not even in the center. He's got one foot out of a circle almost. Right? So we need a better, we need a better throwing technique. Okay. What's another thing that went wrong? That was stolen, definitely. He stole the jump. Did he not? Sure. Did the ball go as high as it could go? Didn't go high at all. We'll never know, Josh. <laughs> Didn't go high at all. No, we will never know because he stole it. <laughs> the last thing I want to mention, which I didn't diagram in here, but wait for the ball to come in or come around. Don't rush through the players and just so you can get to your spot. Because what if for some reason – you decide, oh, he's not going anywhere, I'm going to run. And then this kid decides to go forward and he runs into you. It's possible, and that would look really, really bad. Right? Well, what if, well, what if he dribbles it off his foot and it goes out of bounds? You don't yeah. see it. Yeah. And then technically, yeah, it went, it if it goes off of you out of bounds, he made it go out of bounds because you are part of the floor. How terrible would you feel on that? So just wait wait for the players to clear or literally go around them. You want to keep watching the players, but go around them or wait. All right. What's, what's what is that? That? This well, is that, this is that game yeah. where this is that game where that one kid threw the elbow at the other kid and, and knocked him out and nobody oh, called yeah. it. What, what high school is this? Southern Illinois somewhere. I, I don't know. Uh, Hamilton County. McLeansboro. Oh, okay. HC, Hamilton County, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're playing Christopher. All right, yeah. let's see. I There's live, I used to live down there. Oh, that guy. Oh. Do we see any violation on this play? Yeah. Yep. What was, happened? what was the violation? White number, number three, three moves over. Off. Yeah. Players are moving. He moves around the circle. He changes his position, but he's allowed to do that once the ball is tossed, correct? 
He's moving early. Yeah. But look, the ball's not tossed until about here. Oh. Yeah, then he's he's already he's moved. Steps are ready. And that is the whole purpose of that rule, because this is a play. This is totally a play. Like, look, you think we're going to tap it back here because that's what everybody does. But I'm going to run here, and you're going to give it to me. And nobody's going to think that he's going to get it because he's running into a different position. That's illegal. You two really blew it on this game. Yeah, he did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's you two's job. You two's job is to watch the players around the circle. You one's job is to watch to see if the ball is legally up to as high as it can go and legally tapped. And what's the referee's job besides throwing the ball up? He has more responsibility. What is his job? The jumpers. He's supposed to watch the jumpers. And I think that's kind of unfair because, yeah. because the referee's right in there. What's he going to do? How is he going to see that close? But if there's a foul or a violation of sorts here, he needs to get that. That's the referee's job. Doesn't mean other officials can't come in and help, obviously, but that's his primary responsibility. So after that violation occurs, Josh, how do you administer from there? So if we get this violation, it's a violation on white, correct? Right. So who's going to get the ball? Blue. Oh, Gold. 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 I'm sorry. Gold gets the ball and white gets the arrow. Somebody get Darnell some glasses for Christmas. <laughs> Gold is going to get the ball, and then who's going to get the arrow? White. 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 When white. do you white. when do you set the arrow? White will get the arrow after the inbound is after the inbound pass is completed. Incorrect. Who else wants Wrong. to guess? He gets it as soon as the ball is at the disposal of. Soon as the ball is at the disposal of the thrower. And that means if the thrower then violates, guess what? The arrow doesn't change. Exactly. Or the, I mean, sorry, the arrow does change, right? And they don't even get the arrow because they violated. Right? So we have to know when to set the arrow because if we don't set it till after it throws and they violate, you would say, oh, well, we don't set the arrow yet. We understand that? Or what if you're getting ready to, to hand the ball in to, to gold and then gold says to his teammate, F you, man, ha ha, we got you. And you tee him up. Your arrow hasn't been set yet, right? Nope. Now, when do you set the arrow? After, after the technical <laughs> shot. When the ball is the disposal of the inbounder after so you're going to give the ball to a, a, a player to, to shoot a free throw. So Ooh. is it set after it's at the disposal of the free thrower or no. after the disposal of the throw in? After the disposal of the throw in. The throw in. That's right. So again, he could shoot the free throw, the technicals, both of them and make them. And then white could say F you man, right back at you. We still don't have an arrow, right? That's the reason we do that because you never know what's going to happen. And if it's a rivalry game, you might have stuff before the game even starts and, and it's a big mess, but know when to set it and when not to. All right. What do you do? What do you do with the clock on this? Cause it's in there a violation right off the tip. You set reset that back to eight. No, no. Once the ball is legally tapped and time comes off, you're not going to reset it. Okay. Uh, someone did say, Bob said that he, he can come off the, the circle. And that is correct. You are allowed to move off the circle before the ball is tossed. If it is still in the referee's hands and he moves off the circle, that is legal. But he cannot move around the circle. And actually, the rule states he cannot change positions around the circle. To me, that's just moving around it. But if he moves directly off, that's legal. Does everybody understand that? An important distinction to make. Hey Josh. Yeah. Um, this this season, if there is a season, a high a high school season, I just say is wanting us to bounce the ball, whether on the baseline or sideline. Correct. They want not us to. Not they hand. want us to bounce the ball whenever possible. And keep dis and keep distance. That's right. The whole purpose of that is to say, don't get near the player if you don't have to. I'm hoping they adopt this 
going forward. So when COVID is over, heaven forbid COVID continues on for years and years and years. But when it's over, I hope they say, you know what? That's not so bad. Let's be able to bounce it whenever you want, even on the end line. The rest of the Federation mm. does it that way. The IH, this is an IHSA thing that doesn't allow you to do it. So, um, But for this year, they're allowing you to do it. Here's our last clip. And this one is, a, well, let's just play it. I stole this clip from a better official uh, on YouTube. For those of you that don't know Greg Austin, he runs a better official. I guess he's got a betterofficial.com, but on the YouTube page. And um, we found this clip, so I stole it. And I just want you to know where I got it from. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Why are you laughing? He hurt the kid. <laughs> that's, that's, that's intentional foul there. All right, I'm going to play it fast again, and then we'll do it slow, and then let's talk about it. We talked about intentional fouls earlier. That to me, that's premeditated. Oh, this yeah, is flagrant ejection. Flagrant. That's that's what I got too. He's he's gone. going home. Now, for those of you on Facebook, I put this yeah, on sure. earlier on Facebook, and we got quite a bit of comments on it. That's cheap. Gone. Definitely a flagrant. Now he's going home. He he's gone. gone for the night. Now I that's WWE style. I want to mention this first. They do have a foul. I don't know what they reported because that's not on the clip, but it doesn't look like they called anything more than a common foul. I don't see any arms oh, up. Arms, yeah. Now that's not to say they didn't get together and they didn't upgrade. I, I don't know, but it looks as though they called a regular common foul. Do we think this is a common personal foul? No, no. At the very least, the smallest amount, it is intentional. But I agree with, I think, what almost everybody said. That is a flagrant foul. He did it on purpose. He undercut him. The kid even got hurt slightly, maybe, but he got hurt. That's flagrant. Throw him out. Never yeah, jump at all. He's, the 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 kid, he's he, unprotected. He goes, he's going to do this. <laughs> I'm going to lose a jump, so I'm going to nail the guy. Watch, watch him. He, he goes, he falls right on his back. He doesn't even. Yeah. Protect. The purpose of that was to injure, hurt, whatever you want to say. It is definitely an unsporting and unnecessary uh, contact. Me personally, I'm calling a flagrant and I'm having him sit on the bench for this game and next game. He's gone. Yeah. Now, shouldn't this foul have been called by you one instead of you two? Because then he's supposed to be officiating the jumpers. No, the foul, the all right. The foul should be called by the referee. He, he calls it. The referee well, he doesn't have a whistle in his mouth. The so. rep, but okay. But what I'm saying is the primary responsibility of these two players is the referee. Anybody can get that. Now, and whether that, he has a whistle, in, whether he has a whistle in his mouth or not, once that once he gets out of the way, he can put the whistle in his mouth and blow the whistle. That's, that's correct. Right. Now I'm going to go back to what I said earlier, though. That is really unfair to make the referee make this call. He's too, first of all, he's too close to the play. And second of all, he doesn't have his whistle in his mouth. But it doesn't mean to Darnell's point that he can't pull his whistle and call it four, five seconds late if it takes him that long, then call it. If you see it, call it, right? I think it is totally acceptable for the U1 or the U2 to make that call because they're looking in there. It's, but exactly. somebody, somebody has to get this call. Do we agree with that? Yes. 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 You pass on this. Oh, you're you're going to get in trouble by somebody. Yes, you will. You're going to have a very long night. <laughs> right. And the funny thing is, when you watch plays like this, when guys talk about these kinds of plays, they say, oh, well, that's never going to happen. Well, there you go. That stuff happens. Yes, it happens once every thousand times or once every, you know, 200,000 times. Or it might be very, very small, but it happens, and we need to be ready for it. So one thing, one thing I get taught too is when you need to come out, be ready to officiate right from the very start, and this is a prime example of that. I yeah, agree. and I've talked uh, over with uh, a buddy of mine about the jump ball, and it is one of the least regarded plays of the whole game by officials. But honestly, if you've got any shenanigans that happen in the jump ball, you've just set the tone for your whole game. Mm -hmm. So be prepared and right away start watching and get that because if you don't get it, you're going to have a, not always necessarily, but you're going to have a hard game because 
this kid just got away with something that he meant to do on purpose. Not that it matters, but it, was that a rivalry game? Do you know? I That I don't know. Again, I stole it from a guy from California. And I don't even know if he got that clip from California, but um, <laughs> but that's actually a good point. I used to say, I don't care. Guys will come in and say, oh, okay, now let's be ready. This is a rivalry game. We, you know, this is going to be this. And I say, I don't care if it's a rivalry game. It's just another basketball <clears throat> game to me. And that's the right attitude, right? Every game's just another game. But we should be aware if it's a rivalry game because this is the stuff that could happen right off of the jump. If you know that these players don't like each other year after year after year, be ready for something like this to happen. Hopefully it doesn't, but. All right. Does anyone have anything else? We can, I can play more videos if you want, but that's your hour. I don't want to keep you here too long because that's what we do here. We keep everyone on schedule. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> anyone have any questions? Hey, Josh. Well, I just got a comment. Okay. Uh, let's start your, with the comment. Your videos are outstanding. Well, thank you. Can you see me blushing? <laughs> thank you. I try very hard. And actually, I'm a little upset more than most of you about maybe not having basketball because I've got no clips coming in. How am I going to make more clips if I don't have new material coming in? Well, so Colton. this is what I'm going to ask all of you. And I know most of you are Illinois, but even when we start playing, all of you, if, if you want to share your link of your game with me, most coaches, whether you have huddle access through your association or not, most coaches will send you the link if you ask them. I am more than happy to go through the entire game. I mean, unless, you know, 20 of you sent it to me in one day, it would be rough. But I love going through these. I love clipping them and using them. And I would ask you if it's okay for me to use them. But if you send them to me, I'm, I'd am i love to go through it. And if you say, look at, you know, minute marker number 12, and you know 503 in the third or something like that that's helpful too but i like to go through and i find what i can and for those of you that have been with us for a while you see when i make clips i don't call officials out i don't try to make them look dumb or terrible that they miss something because that's not what it's about and i realize people don't want videos of them screwing up i got <laughs> that but you've all seen enough of my videos of me screwing up um, and it's not a big deal that we all screw up. Um, but we try to pick the ones that we can help teach so we can all get better together. So if you want to share your links with me going forward, I would love it. And, um, I would even clip and send them to you if you want to share them with yourself and your crew or whatever. So just keep that in mind. Uh, thanks for joining. And, uh, hopefully these few little violations that we don't normally see, uh, were worth watching because, uh, I mean, how can you spend a whole meeting talking about kicking violations, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Thanks, I will be ending the meeting in a little bit. I'm going to let everyone log out, and then uh, I'll just shut it down. Thanks, Thanks Josh. Josh. Thanks, uh, guys. Thank you. Good night. Have a good night. Thanks, Josh. Thank you. Thank you.